you guys doing? We're finishing, Harvey. I didn't even know you started yet. You ever done any finishing? No. That's an art. Oh, teach me. Look, let's say you have a party, right? You like parties, right? I like a nice birthday party. Well, you're sitting at a, by a table with your favorite soda, and you put the glass down on the table, uh -huh. right? You go to sleep. Listen, it's been a nice party. You go to sleep, you wake up in the morning, you remove the glass, you're gonna have a white ring. Oh, a moisture brush. Wait a minute. Come here, you. I thought you said you didn't know anything about finishing. Did I say something wrong? No, you said it too darn good, that's all. Now look, you got a ring there, right? You gotta get it off. You take a little bit of lemon oil, right? Then you get a rag, and you ball the rag up like this. And you're gonna use some of this. Rotten stone. Wait a minute. Now, now don't tell me you pulled that out of thin air. I got it at the wood shop. Uh-huh, is that so? Now tell me. Well, I was down at the wood shop, and there were some guys there fixing a table, and I heard one of them say, get me the rotten stone. But you didn't help them. No, they said I was too young. All right, well, look, here's what you do. Now, you put the rotten stone over the ring, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit of rotten stone, and then with the lemon oil, and you would rub. Now, nine times out of ten, Herbie, that ring's gonna come out. If it doesn't, well... You gotta pad that. Wait a minute. Come here, you. Go woodshop, woodshop. Woodshop. You learned an awful lot at that woodshop, didn't you? <laughs> now, look. Here's a padding lacquer, right? The padding lacquer's the same thing. You use the same kind of cloth, and you yeah. put it in a ball like that. You got one? Yeah. Look, I'll have one, too. And you put a little bit... Ah, 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 ah. Okay. Now, you put a little bit of the padding lacquer on there, and you want to use a pendulum-like motion, like this. Uh-huh. Right? Now, that usually will take the spot out. If it doesn't, well, then you got to resort to stripping and staining and sanding and... And a speed coat, six to one, denatured alcohol or resin. <laughs> panoramic view of the countryside to reveal me. Hi, I'm Ed Feldman. No, me. I'm Ed Feldman. You're a liar. That's right. I'm Joe Lorario. And this is Furniture to Go. And here we are at the corner of Broadway and 57th Street. You liar. We're here in North Conway in New Hampshire. <laughs> down by the shores of Lake Dorf. And right down there, the River Corman. It never stops laughing. Here in New Hampshire, they have live free or die on the license plates. That's getting less appealing to me as time goes by. Well, what are we doing here? We need furniture to work on in the show, right? Can't do a show without furniture. We're going to be visiting. I wish we could. Yield House, where they make all types of furniture. In kit uh, form and assembled. And it's finished or it's unfinished, and we're going to be touring the factory, seeing how they make it. You know, Lots they got of some, good stuff. They huh? got laser-guided uh, panel saws. Very little My excess. My aunt has three of them. And she's got very little excess, too. <laughs> oh, ever since she got rid of the husband. And look back there. See that peak? That's Mount Washington. I'm going to go get a snow cone. Uh, I'm gonna get a snow Cohen. That looks straight enough. Ah, <laughs> right on the hand. Here we are inside the Yield House factory, and we're here with the plant manager, Gil Graves. Hey, Gil, how you doing? Yeah, how you There's certainly a lot of machinery here. Yes, there is. This is a state-of-the-art, computerized factory. And we're not wearing our ear protection because we wouldn't be able to hear each other. Yeah, but it's best to watch our show while wearing earmuffs. Behind us, you see a big pile of pallets, and that's how you get the wood in. That's correct. That's been from, received from a mill. It's been surfaced on two sides, and the edges are still rough. So you okay. can see on the edges here, you're still rough too here. That's correct. Soon, rough as, as we are. Yes, we are. And here's the first machine that Merle's uh, working. What does it do? First of all, the boards are placed on the chain deck. Then they pass under a width reader. That width reader tells the computer how wide the board is. That's the laser we're seeing, right? That's correct. The orange line. The orange line. Then at that point, the computer also makes a determination of where it should be cut on the arbor over here on the gang rip. To get rid of the rough edges. To get edges. rid of the rough edges. So uh, you think we could help out? Just don't touch anything. All right. Everybody always says that. OK. Let's get to the next uh, site. What are these markers doing? The people are marking boards. They mark all the bad spots, any unacceptable knots. And they can also quality mark for different clear grades and all that type of material. Is it true that the knot means you should not use this part? You could say that. Well, these boards are coming down at a breakneck pace. And this, this is a, like a chopper. It sort of chops out the bad parts. That's correct. Cameras read where the markers have marked with their fluorescent crayons. Well, well, here, the good boards are being knocked off sideways that's off the right. conveyor belt. And any piece that's bad, it just gets chucked right off the conveyor, Goes right? off the end of the conveyor. That's oh. right. 
All right, Gil, we're in the next room where all the pre-cut pieces of board are loaded into something the, the, called... The opticizer. The opticizer. What does that do? What it does is it reads the width of the boards, and the computer analyzes which combination of boards will be allowed to go through to be glued up into a panel. And the next machine is called... A clamp carrier. And all those boards, the proper boards, are put together, and how is that glued together? There are clamps that come down, and once we load them into the machine, that are pneumatically driven, that tighten up the clamps so that the glue pressure and... So it's actually glue is applied, and then the boards are... Squeezed together. Squeezed together, and that clamp pressure is applied. That's correct. And you get a panel. That looks just like this. You can still see some of the fluorescent marker left over. There's about eight boards on here to make one panel. That's right. It's all been glued and it's dry already. That's right. Set out to dry in these big pallets. Now these go through the sander next, the large sanding machine, and then they're cut up. That's right. They go to the double antennas where they're trimmed down to the final size. Well, let's go take a look at that. That's his rattle. Thank you. I just distressed something for this gentleman. Look, here's a side that's going to be a drawer. This is like those boards that we've been watching going through all those machines, right, all the been, laminations. It's, it's become grooved. a side of a drawer. And this gentleman's putting a drawer together. Ain't it great? Ain't it fascinating? Let's go up here, see some more assemblage. Yeah, I see you have another board. Even though it doesn't look like the board we held up over there. Well, now it's got a little dado in it, and it's right. got a rabbit. Dado, a rabbit, notched out, and this is the basic building block for lots of furniture. And look at this. Here's a finished board. This is the front of the drawer, obviously, right? We're going to go see the finishing process now. The last, and that's why they call it finishing. Finishing, because when you start, you finish. In the spray booth here, here's a light stain being put on a drawer front. Right. Now, once the, uh, once the stain is dry, They'll put a sealer on, a lacquer sanding sealer, and then follow it up with two or three additional coats of clear lacquer. Then after a final drying period, it's ready for assembly. Hey, Gil. Hey, Gil. Hey, guys, you finally caught up with me. We were, we took a detour. This is a finished piece, the same drawer front from the uh, last scene. Yeah, nice maple chest, finished, all ready to be shipped. Now, Yield House does ship a lot of finished pieces to uh, individuals and to stores. Yeah, but we wanted ours in kit form. So we so could have a show. We went around and we picked out some, and they're sending it to us in kit form. So and when next you see us... We'll be assembling some stuff. Thanks a lot. Did we do okay? You did okay. Thanks for not touching anything. <laughs> okay, Thanks. and you did ship that to us. Yeah, you better run, because we overnighted them. Overnight? Whoa, let's get Bye out Bye from here. New Hampshire! <laughs> oh, boy, that was a nice plane ride back from New Hampshire. I threw up twice. In a bag just like this. <laughs> yeah, that, well, <laughs> look what you got in there. Lots of things. Look at this. Vacuum packed. Bird's eye. This comes with a butter sauce. That's jewelry box au gratin. Drop well, it into a big pot of boiling water, and it forms into a jewelry box. These are the hardware pieces that we need to assemble. This... What is it? This is the file cabinet. It's a file cabinet. And this is a jewelry box, and everything comes vacuum packed like this, and all you have to do is take the utility knife, and you cut it, you let the air in. Right. <sighs> See? And then you release all the pieces. And they say, I've been stuck in there for ages. Look, they even give you little bottles of glue, and we're going to use this glue along with the screws and the nails and everything to assemble all these pieces. Just wait. Stick Don't around. believe it. Stick around for the headache. I blame you. I blame you. I had a, I had a really good fillet of porgy the other night. Really? Yeah. I loves you. Well, porgy. I, I didn't know whether to have porgy or bass. I, anyway. Oh, here's the instructions, and we're reading them, and they're pretty easy to follow because they got nice big picatures. And it smells so piney. Yeah, I'm pining for them. So which way does that screw go? Well, see, when the point is pointing this way, this screw is for one of the legs over, over here. See. If I pick up this screw, this screw it point, tells you that's for here. It divines see? to you. Oh, that's I've got stupid. the front, the opening with the mail slot. I thought that was the level. You know, we always take a level on the plane when we go on trips, he and I, because that way we can tell when the plane is turning. Yeah. Put it now on the look, back of the he's doing the front where the drawer goes in. Over here, you see these flanges. These flanges hold in the legs, and I've I already... I that word. Say it again. Flange. Oh, flange. I put a leg in here with a flange attached to that side. I'm going to put the other flange right here. That's so easy. But this, I actually had to make a measurement. Nine and a half inches in, center it there. What's this going to be? This is going to be a block that holds the drawer front. Here's something you don't see on TV. To the car cast. Somebody's using a real screwdriver. Eh, not me, boy, not yeah, me. I know, Will. I know. Center it up. 
Make it, make sure it uh, hugs that bottom edge. Hug that the bottom edge. Turn that screw gun so it points downward. There's one together. Now we take the other flange. I'll do this side, and then we'll have a, uh, you won't be the front of that. the carcass ready. I need another one of my legs. Had an uncle, just like this. He got waterlogged. Well, I'm going to put all this, these aprons, which we put together, and fasten them to the top or the bottom of the top. <laughs> I'm doing the drawer. Where did you get this? Did you get this from the Beast of Ray Street? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I we do. We have some jokes that we never tell you what they mean. Look, I'm doing something here, and I'm having a fancy for a little lunch, just a little appetizers, while I'm making new floor. Well, I have to center this. You know, the blocks that I screwed into the front apron are giving me my perfect space over here, because these they have to be flush with this. But I have to center the other parts so that they're Look, just... glue right in here, right. dovetail. See that? Dovetail. And now the other side. A little bit here, a little bit there. Oh, I love these little bottles. Meanwhile, I'll start to screw these aprons right into now look, the bottom. Right of on the top. here, like that. Mm. This is the bottom. Bottom gets no glue. Don't ever glue your bottom. If you glue your bottom, you'll be sorry. Now, don't knock go. until you've tried it, bud. Where's my top? Here it is. A little bit of glue here. Now, do you do you like to glue your top? See, never work on these giant tables that have wheels on them that get wheeled in and out of the studio or your extension cord could get stuck. Now the drawer is pretty much together. Let's check with the square. Oh, look at that. Square uh, right there. Square right here. I now think we gotta we're off clamp to it another up. thing. Clamp it up. Clamp it up. Legs are on already. This is pretty much made. Look, Jed. Clamp it. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Next, filing cabinet. Just a little harder because it's a case piece. It's not a table. And I'm doing, again, I was put on drawer duty. <laughs> drawer duty. I'm Make doing... sure the drawer isn't droopy now. Droopy drawer. Hello, Joe. Okay, now we're going to put this in here. All right, all right, all right. Can I have this here? No. Now it's my turn to bang. Now I'm gonna put a little bit more here, 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 and finally, right here. All right? Now you get all these pieces together, right? Can I have that? It's got glue all over it. You wanna try and avoid that when you're doing fine woodworking. Okay? And then when you finish putting the thing together... Wipe you, the glue. You got a drawer that's already assembled. Hey, that's a good one. How about that? See, I did that before the scene. And then you take the hammer, and you want to go down right here. See? And then you will nail the drawer side to the back. And in that way... There's no need to clamp. <laughs> I'm gonna put it, flip it over, but the first, I have to attach a discleet over here. Hey, good idea to have when you separate all your little screws, big ones, small ones, brads, etc. Put them all in different pots. That's where I went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what's good about these things? The uh, countersunk screw holes are angled so that they go right into the sides like that. And you know, even if you don't enjoy reading instructions, one concept you always have to remember is everything's got to be flush. So if you don't have things flush, there is no rush. Now, this is the front of the top. That doesn't get flush. The back gets flush. See, after a while, you don't have to read the instructions anymore. <laughs> if you do not flush, you must adjust. <laughs> That's when you get something that looks like the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Whoa! Who was a little guy with funny hair. Like, Paul Wegener. Like Alan Seuss. <laughs> Whatever happened to Alan Seuss? Oh, I know, selling Chevrolets. 
You flip it around. Always work on a nice, smooth surface, because if you don't, you could have big scars on your top, like Richard Boone. Did you ever see one of these? What the heck does this do? It tells you if you're on the level. The Look, this is, the, this is the jewelry box. And I've got the carcass together, which was put together the same way almost as, uh, as Ed's file cabinet. Just slotted, pieces fit into the slots, top and bottom. And here we go now, we gotta put the spacers in. Here's a spacer. I got one glued already, see? Right here, I just put the drawer in, and you measure there, and you know where your line is. There we go. And then you measure down from this spacer, spacer after that's nailed in, which I'll do just like this. Who took my hammer? There it is. Put this in. Well, come here, you. This is soft wood, so you can just about stick that, that nail. You want this tip of this flush to the front of the case piece. See that? The little square there? And it's on the line there, huh? Mm -hmm. On mm -hmm. the level. Bang that bad boy home. And now we take, where the heck are the nails? Who took my nails? Here they are. I got some. Felix, don't play with my nails. See? Now you put that in. And the drawer, which I've assembled pretty much the same way, nailed that in. Look, this is Marty Allen drawer. See? Hello, dear. And this, look, that's how it fits in there, like that. See? And then you put the rest of the spacers in, inch and three-eighths down, each one. Boom, 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 boom. And then, of course, the back right here, which slips right on this way here. See that? And then, finally, the top which fits right on like that there, eh? And then for a real elegant kind of thing, take the picture out, that was a joke. You fold these, and these go right in there, and you have a lovely felt insert for your jewelry box. This is the hardest part. I got a screw in my mouth, it's all right. This is the size of the drawers. These are the drawer sides and the drawer glides on a Hi. Hey, what do you got there? They sent... <laughs> they sent some grapes, see? <laughs> grapes along with the screws and nails. On filing cabinets like this, you don't have a center bottom wooden glide like on our, uh, on our table, but side double metal glides with little locking mechanisms so things don't fall out. The little screws that come with are right there. And if you see these slots here where I'm going to be screwing them into, these slots are oval elongated, oh, circular type things. It's why? Do, oh, why? I'll tell you why. You want to screw right into the middle of the oval, because in case the drawer doesn't fit just right, you can adjust it by sliding, taking the screw out a half a turn, and sliding the glide up and down so as to adjust to height. Because if it's crooked, it won't go in all the way. That's right. Or it won't come out. One of those things. <laughs> But I've done the other side, and I've also banged in these brads, brads, brads. Brads, brads. where brads. you come, Dustin? Brads to hold the back, which is a real thin piece of wood, so you put in brads instead of screws. I've done the other side, and of course, we fitted the top in, and these are the, the parts that the file folders fit on. What are you doing? I thought maybe you would be thirsty. <laughs> I'll bring it around the front and see if it fits. If it fits, it's going to give me the fits. <laughs> Pardon my back, Mr. Cameraman. Oh, well, what can I say? What can I say? You're thirsty? Look, here, put this down. <laughs> I'm gonna it's make like some... a Lucy Wait, show. I'm making wine. Look. Ooh. 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 Write to us. Furniture Guys, P.O. Box 53240, Philadelphia, PA, 19105-3240. Or email us, FernGuyEd, FernGuyJoe, AOL.com. Ow! Sorry. A comparison. A little bit of a comparison. Here's some of the stuff we've been building. Some Yield House stuff. Very nice. Good wood. We've been putting it together. And we'll be staining it sometime or other. This is a barrister bookcase. And it's uh, got one door. They said a variety of doors. One door has got a see-through. It's a glass door. This one is a raised panel door. Right. And you could have both together or one by itself. 
pine comes together easy and nice. And this coat will accept any stain at all. Uh, oil stain, aniline dye. You can paint it if you want. You can top coat it and with anything. And there's a lot of good unfinished furniture like that, like this out. And pine is uh, on the more economical side, but that doesn't mean that it's not good. A lot of people like pine just because it's a soft wood. Don't worry about it. It's good wood, and over time it'll age and honey and get real nice. Oh, yeah, just like, like us. Just like like us. <laughs> and now this piece of wood. Now on wood? Well, like wood. Yeah. This is a piece. It's all flake board. If it's a piece of blank. Look underneath. You see that? See this? This We call this the potato buds of furniture. Look closely. You'll see shredded wheat. Ground up wood pulp products formed with a formaldehyde glue. So even though you may want to burn it, do not burn it. It makes lots of various sparkling colors and Beautiful it's not good colors. for the environment. So but if you breathe it, don't not try a good and thing. burn it. And it's got mylar on it. It's Ooh. not real wood. It's Pictures got, of wood. It's got like that stuff you used to put on your school books, those of us who are our age. <laughs> you remember? But uh, let's put And this, this is there. a TV stand or something. We're telling you the difference between good furniture Look, you assemble and so bad furniture you assemble. It's great, isn't it? Look at that. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait Here, a minute. you sit on Here, it. Here, let me sit on the other side. Oh! Oh, my goodness. That's all we have time for right now. So, uh, to good, that kind of stuff. It's a good thing I didn't put my records in here. Ooh. Hey, this is kind of comfortable here. Yeah, this way it's good. This way. The TV over here is fabulous. No, but I need my TV this way. Look, I'm in a race car. <laughs> the end to our unfinished pine assembly show. Thank Yahweh. <laughs> Thank him so much. No, this we, is a, really, it was an easy show, and it's all pine, and everything comes in one little package for you, so it's not that hard to assemble. All, all. you need is a right-handed screwdriver. And a left-handed screwdriver. Of course. Now, we told you we weren't going to show you every single operation of assembly, but we did show you how everything fits together. I think you got a good idea. First, we had the pine barrister bookcase. Glass front top. And a raised panel top. Front, rather. And down here? We got the desk with the club-footed uh, legs. Your rant. Uh-huh. Like the two-drawer file cabinet. I want that. And the 15 million drawer jewelry box. It's like an opera cake, lots of layers. Just like our show's got lots of layers. So? So here's the before. Oh, not so good. And the after. Oh, so much better. This is a full-service uh, repair show. I'm Ed Feldman. And I'm Joe Lorario. And whether assembled or unassembled, be nice to your furniture and your shoes. Mm -hmm. Coming up next, Bob Vila's home again. Join Mr. Fix-It himself for two back-to-back -back shows, adding contemporary convenience to antique homes, maintaining the class and charm. Stay with us here on TLC.